Hey guys, Private Jack here and welcome to part 11 of my series on how to create a butterfly in Blender and push it all the way through to make it work in Source Filmmaker. Got to remember this is just a very simple model and we're just trying to give you a lowdown on the actual process that you would do to get a model into Source Filmmaker. So, Part 11, we're going to talk about Blender Source Tools and how to set it up, how to do an export, and carry on from there. So, basically, here we have our butterfly. We've created it in Blender. We've textured it. Uh, we've uh, rigged it up with some bones. Uh, we've actually weight painted the butterfly so that uh, things work with the uh, bones. Uh, we've scaled the thing so that it matches the scale of the characters we want to use it with. We've set all the uh, locations, the rotations and uh, scales to that. We've lifted it above the floor uh, so that it won't spawn into the floor when we default it. Uh, then we reset the location, rotation and scale again so that uh, when we export this thing it will actually uh, float above the floor when we default it. We've added an animation to give it a flapping animation and now we're ready to actually take this thing and set up Blender Source Tools and get it exported. So where are we going to go? We're going to come here into the Properties panel and we're going to click on the Scenes tab. This is where Source Filmmaker lives and depending on how your system is set up it might be located in a different area. Blender Source Tool is a plug-in and it has to be downloaded and installed into Blender. It's not native to Blender. Okay, so here's Blender Source Tools. It starts here and it goes all the way down to here. And we have to set up these various fields in order for it to export a model. If I try to hit export right now, it's going to tell me uh, scene unconfigured and we need to set it up. Okay, so, setting this thing up. Looking at the uh, buttons and whatnot else. Uh, okay, so basically export path. We're going to ignore visible layers only and ignore blender materials. Um, these two buttons I don't use and basically it's, it's because I want to set my materials up in Blender so that they work properly when I actually get the model into Source Filmmaker. Okay, so first field we're going to look at is Export Path. This is where we want our exported files to go. All you do is click on the actual file tab there and point your uh, browser to a place. If you need to add a folder, up here on this little folder button. You click the button and add a folder. Name the folder. I usually call mine DMX because I export DMX. Once the file is named, click into it so that you can see the actual folder. Click accept. So that's set up. Next thing is we have to tell it what format we're going to export our source files in. Okay, it's either SMD or DMX. Word of advice, go to DMX because that is the way of the future. All your HWM models are, are created with DMX source files. So I'm going to leave mine on DMX and that's what we're going to use for the actual compile process. Target up access. What this means is which way is up. In our particular case here, our butterfly is sitting on the floor Z is our up access, or uh, access, axis, thank you, and X and Y are our left, right, front and back access, uh, axis. Okay, so we're going to click Z. Uh, engine path. What engine path is, is where your studio MDL EXE file lives for the game that you are compiling the model for. Our case, we are using uh, Source Filmmaker. So click on the little folder and float to. 
your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, Bin Folder. And you're going to find Studio MDL right here in that folder. Click Accept. Now, if I was compiling this for TF2, I would actually go to my TF2 folder, which is in my uh, C program files x86. No, it's not. I've got mine self somewhere else. Okay, so Steam, Steam Apps, TF uh, Common, TF2, TF Bin. No, up a level. Bin. Uh, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, TF2, Bin, and if I look in here, this is the Studio MDL for compiling for TF2. Each game has its own flavor of Studio MDL. Cancel that. I want to use my Source Filmmaker one, so I'm going to reassert that. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, Bin. And here's Studio MDL here. Right there. Okay. Next thing, Material Path. I leave this blank. And the reason why I leave this blank is this can lead to a little bit of a problem. If you populate that field and you have materials that are in different folders, the model has a tendency to ignore those other folders. So, um, yeah, I leave this one blank and I use the CD materials command in the QC to tell the model where the materials live. Wait link call threshold. What is this for? Well, vertexes in a valve model can be controlled by up to three bones, only three bones. When you're working with a more complex model, like a character model, people have a tendency of weight painting to more than three bones. When they weight paint to more than three bones and try to export that model, they'll end up with a error in the model uh, on export saying, uh, influences on so many verts is more than three and what that means is that you've got more than three bones trying to push one of the vertexes and it can become a real mess trying to find out what vertex in a high poly model is being pushed by more than three bones this little slider here gives you the opportunity to actually call out at, by call out, I mean chop out those extra influences. Okay, so if I get that error on a model and I need to find it, I can do one of two things. I can go back into weight paint, I can limit the, the uh, number of influences on the mesh and try to call it out that way, or I can just come in here and I can dial up the, the call limit until such time as the influencing uh, error disappears and I get a, a, an error or a warning saying that a certain number of vertexes have been called to and whatever this value is here. As soon as I see that all my uh, errors saying that you have more than three, uh, three influences trying to push a vert are gone and I only see the error saying that it's being called out, then I know that the model is going to compile. Okay, that's that. That's the upper part. And you can always check for updates. Uh, for Once you have Blender Source Tools, you can always check for updates, and you should do that often. If, you, if there is an update and you have it installed, you do the check for updates, it will automatically install the update. Okay, down the next area is the source engine exportables. Well, this butterfly only has two exportables. It's got the actual object itself, and it has the flapping animation. Okay, so there's two elements of this thing that will export. Uh, 
I have another model that I'm going to show you a little bit later when we get into QC writing uh, that has more and we'll talk about that then. Next thing is the animation or the armature properties and what this is is your animations. Now Blender source tools can only load one animation into the exportables at a time. If you have more than one animation what you have to do is you do your first export and get all the objects into uh, your export folder. Then what you do is you come down here and you click on this and basically find that next animation. Click on the animation and press your export button and just export the, uh, the animation file. We'll see that in a few minutes. Okay. And then we get down into this portion here, which is the tool that allows you to actually compile the model directly from Blender, okay? You don't need Crowbar to actually compile a model. You can do it right here from Blender. And the way that you set this up is GamePath refers to where the game info text file lives for the game that you are actually compiling the model for. In my case, we're using Source Filmmaker and that game info text file lives in your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, User Mod folder. Okay, so User Mod, if I look down here, I'm going to find the game info text file and there it is there. All you have to do is select the folder and click Accept. Next thing is, is the QC path. Where are you going to put your QC? I always use the export folder to contain my QCs. So the reason for that is that if I don't put the QC into my export folder, then I have to write uh, path information to find the QCs into the Q, uh, to find the DMXs into the QC. By putting it here in the DMX folder where I'm going to do my exporting, I don't have to worry about path information except for my animations pretty much. Okay, so I'm going to select that desktop butterfly DMX folder as my QC folder. I'm going to click accept and it's going to stay red. The reason why it stays red is because I don't have a QC in there yet. And you'll see that in the Q, uh, you'll see what happens when I put a QC in there uh, in the next video. So this has Blender Source Tools pretty much set up for what we need to do. Before we export the model, we do a final check. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out any animations that I have because I don't want any chance of a deform in the model when I export it. So I'm going to select the bones. I'm going to go into pose mode. Pose mode. I'm going to press A a couple of times to select all the bones. Come down here to pose, clear transform, and clear all. What that does is it sets the model back into its rest position. I make sure that my timeline is sitting on zero or one because that is usually the actual rest pose. Okay, that done. I come back out of pose mode, back into object mode. One of the things I want to check now is to ensure what my... Uh, material names are called. So I'm going to go to my materials tab and I find that my material is called butterfly. If I had more than one material here I would walk through each of the materials and make sure that the names are something that I want to use as my VMT names in Source Filmmaker. Okay once that's done uh, I just do a quick look at the model and make sure everything looks good. We know that it's already scaled to work with our TF2 characters. We know that it will spawn above the floor because of where we have the origin point. 
And that's the other thing that, that I want to check. So I want to check the armature and the actual objects that I have in my model to make sure that the origin points are all in the same place and that should be center on the floor. Okay, that done, we're pretty much ready to export. So let's go back into Blender Source Tools. Click the Scenes tab, come here to Export. We've got Blender Source Tools all set up. We can see that we have our exportables ready to go. All we have to do is press Export. Hit Export and you'll be presented with this little thing. And this gives you the ability to export many files or a single file. And this file here is the actual selected object in your scene. So if I click on the bones and press export, I see that I can export the animation for that particular, the, the, the animation that is actually set up in my uh, exportables. Now, if I did not have it, an animation in the exportables that, and I selected the bone structure of the actual butterfly and pressed export, I would see here that there's, uh, there's nothing to export and I could only export two elements here. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I want to export both of these exportables at the same time. I'm going to click on export and click scene export. So away it goes and it exported two files in 0 0.08 seconds or 0 0.8 seconds. See it again, export. If you export and you see here, uh, there's an error. What you can do to find out what that error is, is come over here to the Windows menu option, open that up and toggle the system console. In here, in the system console, you can see anything that is being passed through uh, Blender source tools. So everything's updated, functions, yada, 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 away it goes, and poof, there's my export. Okay, we'll be getting more into this when we do the actual compile. Okay, so now that we have the files exported, let's have a look at the folder come up here. Here's my DMX folder and here are my DMX files. I've got the object file and this object file contains the armature. I have another folder called Anims and in this folder I'm going to find my flapping animation. Okay, so that's pretty much it for exporting and uh, yeah, so Stay tuned, we're going to write the QC and uh, have a little surprise for you when we actually get into QC writing. So with that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.